I'm Kelly Ellers. I'm Jeffrey Lennon. And this is Volume Up by the Teens. So we've seen Pamela Anderson emerge in our feed with Tommy. <laughs> and one thing that is sticking out to me is the skinny eyebrows. Are they back? We think they're back. What are your thoughts? I mean, I'm cringing. People can't see me. Well, maybe they'll see us. Um, cringing at the idea of a Pamela Anderson brow. I mean, the mm -hmm. the show, the Pam and Tommy thing, like the attention to detail is incredible. Like they've captured that look. I I don't, do we really need to go back to skinny brows? Like no. it was so unforgiving. Yeah. Like, and, and people are just now coming back from over plucking to the extent. I, like, it will mm. take decades to <laughs> grow them back. That's what nobody realizes. I was going to say Gen Z learned the lesson that we've learned. <laughs> like, so you're, you know, uh, just don't do it. This is also when don't you said it. that she's returned, she has also returned herself, not just her likeness via Lily James or whatever. Yeah. Pamela Anderson is going to do this Netflix series and she's still rocking skinny brows, which is. Oh. And, I, and you know what? She can't hold on to a man to save her soul. What is going on? She's Pamela Anderson. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's all maybe too the much brows. Funny. I don't know. It might be the brows. Yeah. They're shocking. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't. They shouldn't come back. That's you've heard it here. If you're a listener and you want a skinny brow, like we'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah. Please, please, please get in touch with us because I'd love to understand the thought process there. Look, on last week's episode, we talked with the one and only Frederick Aspiris, master wig maker, hairstylist to the star, a one Lady Gaga. Frederick Aspiris has earned his reputation as the leading artist, one of the leading artists in the beauty industry. Five years after his move to LA from the Bay Area, he was introduced to Lady Gaga and the rest is history. We talked with Frederick on our last episode all about his journey, which was incredible. He was so open, which kind of shocked me. Uh, as well as his collaboration with Lady Gaga. So if you're a Gaga fan, a little monster like myself, you gotta, you know, just go back and listen to that episode. Uh, it's worth it. And of course, he's up for an Oscar. So fingers crossed for him and for his team that he takes home a win at the upcoming awards, which is probably going to be airing very close to when this episode goes live. And yeah, kudos to him. Make sure you listen to that episode. And if you like that episode and you like learning more about the industry, those who are enacting change and creating a better world, make sure that you subscribe, rate, and review, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok at Read the Tees and send in questions to volume up at the tees.com, including your thoughts on skinny brows. Yes. All right, Jeff. On this week's episode, we are talking with Gabby. Just Gabby. You'll real, you'll know why. It's just Gabby from Trilla Nails. She is a creative and a creative, not just in the sense of from a salon professional standpoint, but she also specializes in content creation, beauty imagery, and her bread and butter, the nail artistry of it all. Her Instagram is Trilla Nails. She's incredible. Um, she really creates vibrant concepts that connect with other beauty enthusiasts and brands to celebrate real emotion and social identities that make us truly who we are. And that's Trilla AF, as she says. Uh-huh, yeah. She wow. is absolutely amazing. You're gonna love this interview. She might be the most passionate person, she might be the most passionate person I've ever talked to about the artistry of nails. Wow, well, I can't wait to listen. Uh, but before we get to that interview with Trilla Nails, we're gonna talk yes. about something that's a little bit Gross. Sorry. Oh, nice. um, uh, so first up, do you have a signature scent, a perfume, something you use? I, I just say it. Just share it for the the podcast listeners. Of course, and it's been an evolution. Okay. <laughs> so for a majority of my like twenty, like nineteen to let's say thirty two. I was doused in Michael Kors, doused Ooh. in it. Wow, and this I is felt an honest... great about it. Mm. I felt mm. really I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Yep, yep. When I walked in a room, Michael <laughs> came with me. Michael came right he along. He was there too. Yep. Okay. MK. So then, <laughs> okay, so then my scent evolution, you know, got to like tone it down from Michael and I. 
I moved swiftly on to Joe, Joe Malone. And they discontinued my favorite, but I also am a connoisseur of wood, sage, and sea salt. Um, I love the intense colognes that they have because I tend to go that way. And then out of sheer trendiness, years after said trend, I then moved on to Le Labo. Le Labo? La Labo. Yes. Mm. And so There's now- There's no wrong answers. Yes, Santal 33, but more so Ambriette. Ooh. Well, then this might be right up your alley. Yes. Uh, a recent story mm -hmm. from L.com suggests that there's a new wave yet. A recent story from L.com suggests that there is, quote, a new wave of subtle yet evocative fragrances that aim to emulate the intimate warmth of human skin and quote. Mm. Uh, do, do we want fragrances to smell like skin? That, that, that's the question that I want to pose to you. So, I mean, there's been moves from the Lalabos of the world, however we pronounce that. Is it French? Is it English? We don't know. Is Lassier? it Midwestern? I don't it, know. It might be. It's impossible. It's impossible <laughs> to tell. Um, we should get somebody from the brand on the podcast. Uh, but, you know, they've been investing in these like musky, peppery scents mm. instead of the heavy florals uh, in order to sort of soften things up, maybe. Do you, do you want perfume or fragrance that smells like skin is the big question. I don't understand what skin smells like. That's exactly right. Okay. What is baseline? I want my skin to smell like Ambriette, <laughs> but I want Ambriette not to smell like my skin. <laughs> like it's reversed, mm -hmm, it's reversed. Mm -hmm. And so I get it, you know, we're coming out of social isolation. We're coming out of social isolation. We want to connect on all of our senses. Skin sense, they're saying, can give us all those things. Whose skin is the scent? That's what I'm saying, right? Like, I think we we have to understand <laughs> who, who we're basing this mm -hmm. skin scent off of. And if we like that scent first. Yeah. And then, sure, maybe we do want to smell maybe like Maybe we get on skin. board. Maybe. You know, I... <laughs> actually, this is coming full circle. Mm -hmm. Ambriette with Le Labo is actually supposed to smell like a newborn baby. It's the, wow. just the gentlest of smell. For me, when you put like 15 to 20 sprays on, it's not so gentle, but maybe I'm gonna send you over some and then you compare your new baby to Ambriette and tell yes. me if they smell the same. I will, I will gladly do so. Uh, this is incredible. Uh, all right. So now we've heard about the evolution. We want to hear from you guys. If you are into skin scented scents, let us know. Do. Hopefully it's one or the other. It's, you're not into skin scented scents plus skinny brows. Um, but you, again, you That's let us know. tragic. Uh, <laughs> things that are not tragic. Our coverage on thetease.com. Our editorial team has been hard at work this week, just like every week, uncovering industry news, looking into trends, and diving into brands that you don't know, but you should. And here are some of our favorite headlines. First up, The Ordinary just launched a new hair care product, and they're full of sulfates. So we've been trained not to be into the idea of sulfates in our hair care. Um, it's no secret that sulfates, however you spell them, have a bad rap. Uh, for years, the hair community has largely written off the well-known sudsing agent over its ability to strip way too much moisture from strands. And as a result, many consumers and brands have switched their focus to sulfate-free options that are believed to not only give a better, gentler clean, but are better for hair in general. Uh, however, one beauty brand, the aforementioned The Ordinary, uh, has refused to jump on this anti-sulfate bandwagon and in fact, the cult favorite skincare brand recently expanded its hair care line with the launch of a trio of hair care products that are made with the once controversial ingredient. Maybe still controversial, let's be clear. <laughs> uh, much like their skincare products, this three-step hair care system takes a science-forward approach towards caring for hair by highlighting the use of sulfates in its new line, The Ordinary ultimately hopes to clear up the misconception that this hair care ingredient is harmful to our strands. In moderation, it's not. Which begs the question, Kelly, are you convinced? Are you going to be using the Ordinary's hair care system featuring sulfates? Lay it on me. You know, I haven't really thought about sulfates much, to be honest with you. Okay. I do like a good sudsing, makes me feel good, makes me feel better. The extra well, then, 
And, this- you know, for them, they're saying that the anti-sulfate messaging has labeled sulfates harsh, but when mm-hmm. properly and appropriate with appropriate concentration levels, they can be effective. So I've got to believe that the people over at the ordinary know what they're talking about. I'd try it. Okay. And that's mm-hmm. what we can hope for. So, I mean, <laughs> if you're interested in this sulfate filled <laughs> formulation, you should definitely go over to the tees.com, check out this article, and then maybe add it to cart, test it for yourself. Mm-hmm. All right. Look, we often talk about women's hair trends on this podcast. You know, we've talked at length about the Bixie and others, things that I hope for you one day. Um, one something day. on the tees.com right now is five men's hair trends to watch out for this year. Uh, 2022 has really only just begun, and it's been pretty wild for hair so far. Uh, we've seen octopus haircuts, shullets, aka mm-hmm. shaggy mullets. You already know. I mean, everybody that's listening know. to this podcast yeah. knows. Um, <laughs> as well as the return of the Bixie, we just talked about it. Uh, and that's been just among women. But guys, we're not going to leave them out. Luckily, we've scoured the internet on the tease.com to discover styles, cuts, and colors that are set to dominate men's hair for all of 2022, from a new take on the buzz cut to an in sync era hair. These are the haircuts that you can expect all of your clients to be requesting from now until year's end. Um, go over to the tease.com to check out what we're talking about. Kelly knows. So I'm going to ask you, Kelly, if your boys could only have one of these five hairstyles, Ooh. which one would it be and why? Wow. Hair is a I know, I know. topic this week, especially we love this week. I, before we get there, my, my six-year-old's highlights were getting in his time. <laughs> I said six. He's actually nine. Okay. Sorry. My nine-year-old. So I said, Hey, let me cut those. I cut them too short, which then ensued an entire event around which he wore his stocking cap for a day, refused to go to school, then enrolled professional barber that afternoon and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So Mm -hmm. we've got to be careful around here. (laughs) Let this be a lesson. Mm, yes. But if I had to pick one, I mean, I love the floppy 90s fringe because they do have curl. Both of my boys have curl, mm-hmm. as do you. And I believe when I met you, you might have had the floppy something, 90s I was going to say something not too far from that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good look. My husband right. has curls. I'm making him grow out his hair as well against his will. Um, <laughs> so I'm going 90s fringe. What about you? <laughs> Um, I mean, I think the Technicolor dye job is where Same. I'm at. Um, yeah, I'm like very that. much looking forward to going back to, to blonde and then mixing it up. So that one has like been a tried and true. I mean, we've seen it a couple of years now, but it's not going anywhere. So I'm thinking that I might dabble in that bad boy um, again. Okay. All right. Also on the tease.com, something that's a little bit more serious uh, and that we're very excited about is the article P&G Beauty and Fairchild Media Group launch a new diversity equity and inclusion fund. So when it comes to diversity and inclusion in the beauty industry, P&G Beauty and Fairchild Media Group are doing their part to make sure that it's a top priority. This week, this past week, this past week, the two companies joined forces to announce the launch of a new entrepreneurial focused project called the Fairchild Founders Fund. Say that five times fast. Uh, (laughs) Diversity and equity and inclusion, DEI, which will help find the next generation of companies who are making a meaningful difference in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. This new fund, which is part of the 2022 FNG Virtual Diversity Forum taking place on March 23rd, is available to startup and entrepreneurial brands, agencies, retailers, and suppliers in fashion, apparel, footwear, beauty, and wellness. And while all are welcome to apply, ideal applicants and brands will have existing DE&I programs in place with the founder who is of a diverse race, gender, ethnicity, age, sexual orientation, nationality, socioeconomic status, or disability. So Kelly, the question is, is this the right step or too little too late? Ugh, too little too late. Come on, yeah, get with I know. it. I know. I mean, this is potentially polarizing opinion, but really, <laughs> this is new. Yeah. Just now. But they're doing it. They're doing it. They're and good doing for them, it. Right? Like we're, and we're, good for them. And yes. thank you to them. We need more brands to follow in their footsteps yes. and very swiftly because the time is now. The time is now. The time was uh, then. The time was back then. 
Okay. The time has passed now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so much going on. This is the least that we could be doing. Uh, so kudos to them. Go over to thetees.com, check out this article for more, certainly how you can sign up if you were interested in applying. All of that's there in the article. Uh, and as always, there's so much going on at thetees.com. So if you're not checking it out on the regs, you definitely should. Uh, thank you to our hardworking editors. We are proud to publish stories that salon pros and consumers care about. Next up, Gabby with Trilla Nails. So excited for you to hear this pod. Get ready. We're diving into the nail industry and no one better to do it than her. Find her and follow her on all of the platforms and then find us and follow us on all the platforms. Be sure to hit subscribe, rate, and review and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at Read the Tees and send in questions and comments, especially about skinny brows to volume up at the tees.com. <laughs> Make it happen. Volume Up is a Tease Media production. This episode was produced by Monica Hickey and Madeline Hickey. Brian Daly is our editor and audio engineer. Thank you to our creative team for putting together the graphics for this episode. <laughs>